but in February they were the numbers were 2.5 percent of Steam users were on Linux compared to 3.2 I think were on Mac. So granted, I mean, Windows has the majority, but we're catching up to Mac, and people are happy with the Mac sales. So it's working out really well. So that's my basic five-minute little intro. And I was hoping to go through the floor and have people discuss and talk and have questions and move from here. <coughs> Okay. <laughs> so this discussion isn't quite going as the discussion goes. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, so for those who may not know what the Steam Box is, what exactly is the Steam Box? Um, We've had the discussion before. But right. Those who... The Steam Box is actually really cool. There's actually a couple of them coming out. One uh, from third party developers and from um, and from Valve natively. But they're essentially just, you know, small computers running Linux that boot into Steam on a desktop mode. I mean, in a big screen mode that are meant to plug into your TV uh, with game controllers. So it's essentially, that right there. what's that? That thing right there. Oh, uh, some of these. It's essentially a console. Yeah, that's those are some of the third. That's one of the third party ones they were showing at CES. I don't think that's the Valve one though. I don't think Valve's really screenshots of theirs. But. I'm hoping the Valve one's going to be a nice smaller package. It looks a little bit more like a gaming console. Though, there are some gaming PCs that are looking like consoles. Um, Alienware has a, has a setup like it for them that are pretty nice, but they run Windows natively. But of course, it's going in a good direction. I think the problem is I know, me too. <laughs> me too. So we're looking like Linux is seeing a lot of growth. So my prediction over the next few years is we're going to start seeing more and more engines with like the Crisis Engine, the, um, the Unreal Engine, having native Linux support on the back end. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see that in the next revision or two of all these popular gaming engines. Um, the, more, the more the numbers are out there, because a lot of indie developers are releasing their numbers for their Linux sales, Mac sales. Steam updates their page monthly for hardware usage, for what operating system they're using. And as those numbers show more and more Linux users, the developers, the people who are using them, are going to start pushing for more and more Linux support. Because even the AAA industry that runs on money, they're all working their way to Mac, which a lot of them are going to support Mac now. And the Linux numbers are right next to Mac, they're probably going to start pushing for Mac. Like especially because if they're already making for Mac, they're already putting to OpenGL. And it's just one step further to go to to go over to Linux. To go over and just have it going. So it's an exciting year. There's a lot of really, really awesome stuff happening. So um, another thing that's really awesome is this last year NVIDIA has completely repolished and updated all their licensing, all their uh, drivers, the video drivers, for better support, better 3D support, better technology support on the Linux platform. So we're seeing a lot of, we're seeing better drivers, more games, and AAA support, and a lot of indie support in the Linux community, which over the past few years in the past, Linux support, I mean, Linux gaming was almost a joke. It was hey, you can configure wine. Or, hey, you can buy this pre-configured wine package that's made the rest, you know, to run the game you want. And that's not really what gaming's about. People want to just log in and play the game. They don't want to go through and configure a bunch of settings, you know, set up wine in a specific way to get it running perfect in their operating system and then have it run substandard because it's running on top of a layer on top of that's supposed to simulate Windows. So it's really nice to see a lot of native Linux applications. So you mentioned the indie games, do you see bigger titles getting ported over? Absolutely. Um, Origin is already um, most gaming developers are trying to release both Linux or both PC and Mac versions. And like I said, we we can already see where the Mac numbers lie. Uh, where the Mac numbers lie are very close to the Linux numbers. 
So right now, I don't know if their engines are built for it, but over the next year, I think we're going to see more and more AAA go to Linux or support Linux. I think we're going to see a much less divide over Windows only gaming. I think we're going to be going away from the one operating system exclusive titles. Yeah, there will be a few, especially anything from studios owned by Microsoft. That just makes sense. But the farther we go, the more we're going to, the more we're going to see diversity. I think we're going to see more of um, titles that have been out for a while being ported over now that you know Linux is growing in gaming popularity, or is it just going to be the new stuff? Oh, I think it's going to be a bit of both. <laughs> Developers are really paying attention to what people are asking for, and I think they're watching some of their forums, especially if they're announcing future Linux support. I think people on the forums might be asking if you're going to port this game to Linux. Yeah. Like this week has been a big, a big week. A lot of the source games that people have been excited about are supposed to be launched this week. We had a portal launch yesterday for Linux. Uh, the Left 4 Dead are supposed to come out next week. So I mean, we're, already, already, we're already starting to see some of that, but we're going to be seeing more and more of it as time goes on. I mean, obviously, those are Valve, Valve the Steam, so we knew those were coming, so they're not the best examples, but the fact that the game is porting their old library over is just an awesome thing. And you also have things like Google Games, which, you know, they sell pretty much all classic titles, well, they do release some new games now, but you know, their big library is classic games. So the more classic games we see purchased there, oh, developers aren't stupid. They're looking at where they can make easy money and if they can easily port a game to a, oh, they can easily make money and not have to redo the card assets. And it makes sense for them to want to port to the operating system. But that's going to on a game to game basis. Um, engines, archaic engines don't necessarily work, but we'll see. Um, they may just make a new port using something like Unity to move the game over and just recode the game and copy over the art assets. So there's a lot of really cool stuff happening. I think it's going to be interesting. So why now? Why now? Yeah. Um, What's changed recently that they're all of a sudden jumping on? It's called Windows 8. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I, I really do think it's a part of Windows 8 because Windows 8 made for tablets um, and phones, specifically smartphones. So it's more touch screen based. Whereas, how many people have a touch screen? Yeah. Well, but they're not. They're they're coming down in price, but how many want to go out there and buy a new touch screen just because the new operating system is gonna? Or new new laptop or you know whatever because that's what it's made for. It's not made for a mouse. Right. Well, Microsoft made a big mistake. <laughs> uh, they did. I think we because all. Because here's the thing about it: Metro UI or the new UI or whatever they're calling it this week is. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? They've changed the name of it like three times now. For what? Their their new UI. Yeah, to confuse people. Yeah. But the. The thing about it is, it's great for a tablet, it's great for a phone. Yes. It is not made for a PC. It's not and made for something you use mouse with. Right. So to boot into this obscure UI that's not really very easy to find or use, to then go into your desktop where you can actually use your operating system, is just not worth it. Now you can pay, like there's some free software, Startup has one called Startup that lets you pretty much disable the, the new UI and go right to your desktop and get the nice stuff. That's what I use on my install to bypass it. And it makes the operating system usable. But you're right, Windows 8 was a big push. Uh, Windows 8 was huge. Having their whole store and that scare that happened in the industry of having to go, everything go through the store just scared a lot of developers into looking for alternatives. And that's what really got a lot of people pushing for Linux. Because just the the way Linux works with the open source community, you really can't have that happen. So we can't have one controlling body for it. So a lot of people are just looking for it. And also they were looking for an operating system for their own Steam box. So I think that just helped push, but I think it was gonna happen anyway. I think the Steam box is gonna be a, a really big push for it. So, welcome. So we've just been having a little discussion um, we were talking about Steam and Unity support and 
the basis of some of the other stuff that I'm going to talk for another. I'm not going to, talk, I'm going to say everything over again, but if you have any input or any questions, please feel free. This is an open discussion. So. Okay. Yeah, it's been pretty quiet, so. <laughs> so. We can keep banging on Windows if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I think I'm going to divert the, the class a little bit since I don't really have anything else to say there. But Netflix, moving to HTML5 pretty soon. Right. Which is going to get put Netflix on, on Linux eventually. Now, the big controversy about this is the way that it's happening is they're putting DRM on HTML. They're having DRM support on HTML5. So they're having what? DRM. Basically, you know, digital copyright protection so that they can protect, so the movie companies can protect their stuff. That's why that's why Netflix has been on Silver Lake this whole time because of the DRM support for it. Um, they're moving away from Silver Lake because Microsoft doesn't even support Silver Lake anymore. And Flash is pretty much dying in the grave. Um, there really isn't much push for Flash anymore. There really isn't much push for Silverlight. Everything's moving HTML5. Even Java's starting to go the way of the dinosaur. So is the DRM actually going to be in like the, you know, the HTML5 or JavaScript? Or It'll be in the browser itself. Or, okay. Or, well, but I mean, like, is it going to be in the specs, or is it just sort of a browser extension? Or It'll be in the specs. Oh, okay. That's actually what um, Netflix is waiting for, mm -hmm. is for the DRM specs to go into HTML5 before they can move over. Because they can't move, they can't, they can't stream their stuff on anything not approved by the MPAA. Mm -hmm. And, well, that's happening, they have to, they have to have it. So a lot of people are upset that Netflix is pushing for DRM and HTML5, but it makes sense for them as a business. Um, and it also makes sense because they want to be on Linux. They want to they be on everything. Who doesn't want to be on all operating systems? So, um, especially with the growth of Linux, it's going to be happening over the next few years. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, how many people in this audience know someone who said or said it themselves? I've been on Linux, but I'm, I'm a gamer. I want to play my games. You know, I can't play my games in and operating in, in Linux natively, or I can't play all my games, or I can only play a few of them, or I have to be one each time for each game. You know, it's just too much of a pain. And nowadays, Netflix is the same way. People keep saying Netflix is the absolute. You know, I can't move off of I can't move to Linux because it doesn't have any of Linux support. But a lot of people, that one's kind of easy to configure one for and go the one path for Netflix. But it's still not optimal. So, any questions? Hey, Doug. Spotlight on you. <laughs> what do you have to say, Doug? What do you think? <clears throat> Happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Start all over. So, um, so yeah. So we've got a lot coming from Linux, and Linux has pretty much been growing consecutively um, on the Steam platform. And I think it's only going to get better, especially as the library of games grows. The more we go, the farther we're going to get. And the farther we get, the better off we're going to be. Um, the more AAA, the more indie games. I mean, indie games right now are huge. I mean, five years ago, no one was really paying attention to the indie market. If you were an indie game developer, you weren't making any money. But now, with games like Minecraft, uh, Super Meat Boy, Fez, I mean, Braid. I mean, there are dozens and dozens of awesome indie games coming out every week. And it's just, it's a plethora of great games, gaming experience. And the more of that we have, the better off we're going to be on things like Steam and, and the Linux gaming community. And also with the whole Unity platform. Um, how many of you are familiar with Unity? One, two, three. Oh. Unity is a gaming engine. Um, developers can write their code in Unity Script or in Objective C model, basically. And they can write a game once 
import it to just about everything. Um, a lot of big game developers are using this engine now. It's gaining a lot of traction, it's gaining a lot of ground. Um, it has made supporting the Linux extremely easy. Uh, last year they started supporting Linux as one of the things you can build for, which has really caused one of the other big booms in the Linux gaming community has been you know, having support for a major gaming engine that a lot of indie developers are using to Linux. Because now instead of having to spend months and months and months on a Linux port, it's, okay, let's do a recompile, make sure everything works, push it out. And it's a beautiful thing. Another big thing that's gotten popular is HTML5 gaming. Um, and with, well, there's a lot of HTML5 JavaScript engines out there, and some of them are even using their own built-in web clients to have native experiences instead of running through a web browser. So we're seeing more and more really cool things coming from the industry, from everybody. And I think we're just going to have a huge growth in the Linux platform. Do you see anyone else other than Steam really pushing for it? Um, I see Steam being the biggest one pushing for it. There are a lot of game developers pushing for it, but as far as like hardware people, I mean, like I said, PlayStation 4 is going to be running on BSD backend. So that's hard, that's kind of helping, but it's not really the same thing. But Valve is definitely the one that's really pushing a place for game developers to sell their games. Because before, there really wasn't a solid place to sell a, a pay for a game at Linux outside of your website. You're just kind of stuck trying to be out there and trying to get enough press to get some traction. With Steam, you actually have a platform that's popular that people are using that everyone's going to that gives you a place to sell, so that helps also. And it's going to help boost the sales of companies that just aren't going anywhere or just haven't been able to get traction. So if it gains a lot more momentum, do you see some exclusives maybe coming up? I think it's possible. The problem is, is right now, like, you would have to get a lot of traction. Because right now, Linux is like 2.5% of the market. Right. Mac is 3% of the market. The other 94.5% are Windows. So there has to be a lot more traction before we're going to start seeing exclusives. Because in order for us to, in order for game developers to see the money sign on an exclusive title, they have to see the numbers for the exclusive title. It doesn't financially make sense for a company right now to release a game on Linux and not release it on Windows because there's no real benefit to just doing that. You're putting a couple of pennies in when you could have a whole dollar. So. But the industry, the market is growing. And possibly in the next three, four years, it's possible. I mean, you kind of got to look at the market right now as we looked at browsers a few years ago. I mean, a few years ago, the browser market was, you know, IE rule the world. And how are we going to compete with IE? And then Firefox, you know, was pushing a little bit, but they weren't really making a lot of headway. They hit their, their numbers and they kind of stuck there. And then Chrome came in and everyone thought Chrome was going to just, you know, eat at the Firefox numbers. And now Chrome is the top browser. And it's no longer IE. We're finally past the point of IE ruling all browsers. You can actually have HTML5 and, you know, high end, you know, web development and all these nice features you wanted for years but haven't been able to because the browser was archaic. Because everyone was having to code around eight, um, IE6, which doesn't support anything. So we're, we're moving. We're moving a long way away from what we were. I mean, that's why things like Flash and Silverlight flourished, was because we wanted these en enriched web experiences, but the browser was holding us back. And now that we have, you know, higher end browsers with high end JavaScript capabilities and, you know, HTML5 support, we don't need those things anymore. We can finally move on past it and start working toward a more active development. Also, every major, well, not every major, because I use a major, but um, both Firefox and Chrome are moving to shorter six month cycles on the major releases for their browsers which means instead of having to wait two years to get a new feature, we're starting to see features come out very popular. The browser market has become very competitive, very 
I mean, we're literally looking at, the benchmarks we're looking at these long graphs compared to like the old browsers, you know, we're looking at milliseconds now. We're not really looking in seconds like we were, you know, a few years ago. So it's, it's a different market. And I think when it's going to be the same thing. I think in a few years, those numbers are going to even out. And possibly Linux is even going to overtake, especially when you consider the fact that there isn't going to be much Linux isn't going to offer at that point. Because once the numbers start shifting, we're going to, in the application market, we're going to also see companies like even Microsoft releasing their Office Suite or having Office support uh, for Linux. We're going to see Adobe supporting Linux for their productivity apps. We're going to be able to see the stuff that the industry is using on all three platforms. And that's just going to make everything, it's just going to make a better market. And then when there's really not a reason to say, I'm not using Linux anymore, why pay for Microsoft? Why pay that fee? And at that point, Microsoft's going to have to rethink their business strategy because they're not going to have that market. They're not going to have that stranglehold they've had on the market for years because, you know, they've had the gamers, they've had a lot of the offices, they've had a lot of everything. They've been losing ground in the office space for a while, and now they're going to start losing ground in the desktop space because they're losing the thing that kept the desktop people on it. It's just a matter of time. And that's really all I have. <laughs> Um, do you think we'll be seeing um, computer manufacturers start moving toward making things with Linux in mind instead of here's Windows, you can install Linux on the side, you know? Um, do you think we'll see more of that soon, or is that going to take some traction too? I think we're probably going to start seeing that sooner than later. Like I said, we're already seeing hardware developers with Steambox in mind, which is Linux. And we've already, over the last few years, we've started seeing companies like Dell have a Linux install option and System72, which is pretty much all Linux-based. We're starting to see it already. So the traction is already starting, but I think it's only a matter of time, especially when you're really thinking about the gaming, like gaming mics and gaming computers. The second we have a, the second we have a Steam box, we're gonna start seeing them hopping on the Linux bandwagon too. They're gonna have Linux desktops and they're gonna all make their own Steam boxes also. So yes, I think that's definitely gonna happen. Um, to address another thing that you had mentioned, you were talking about the Metro UI. The reason they did that was because everyone's working toward a unified, a unified environment right now. Um, one operating system for both brands. Um, Linux is Ubuntu is working on it. Um, Mac is working on it, and Apple's, I mean, and Microsoft's working on it. Windows 8 was Microsoft's unified operating system. It wasn't a bad idea, it was a poor implementation. If they would have not had the Metro UI be the default in, in de desktops and had it be something that you could just click on and load up or have some options for it, it would have come, up, came across a lot better. But they did it wrong. Um, the next version of OS X and the next version of iOS are going to be also working toward the unified operating system. They're supposed to be flattening the iOS interface. They're going to be doing a lot of stuff with the Mac interface to make it more in line. And it's probably going to be another innovation to really merge them into one operating system. Um, you can already get an Ubuntu phone. That's a mobile <coughs> interface there. When you plug the mobile interface into a dock, um, it'll load up on a monitor and give you a desktop interface. So that's where the industry is going. It's only a matter of time before we have really one device we carry around, like a tablet or a phone. And when we get in range of our dock or docket, it's going to turn into our desktop PC. We're getting closer and closer to it every year. And I think it's just a matter of time before this starts to really be our computer and less of our phone. It's already starting to become that. And don't watch me for losing an iPhone or open source convention. <laughs> <laughs> Have you jailbroken at least? Uh, no, they haven't released a jailbreak for the new version yet. So. so, yeah, so that's. So, actually, I have a question. So, do you think, um, like, DirectX versus OpenGL is going to stand in a lot of people's way? Because, you know, if they, they program it for DirectX, it's probably going to, you know, they're probably going to have to go in and. For the short term? Yes. Um, for things like the Crytek engine and 
yes, it's definitely going to be in the way. But the next revision, especially when people are starting to see that Bell's numbers, uh, with OpenGL basically being able to support all the features of the latest RTX, faster, and being able to support the older computers, being able to support the Windows XP, is being able to support um, older hardware, running better, scaling better. I really think it's a no-brainer. I think we're really going to see a move away from DirectX. I think a lot of people have been very, game developers have been very DirectX minded because when you write for DirectX, you're writing for Windows. And a lot of people thought that was the best way to do it because Microsoft made DirectX. Why not? Why wouldn't they not do it the best? And Valve's proved they haven't. When Valve released, when Valve was working on porting their source engine to Linux, when they ran Left 4 Dead 2, they found the frame rates improved a lot on the Linux platform. I think it was 30% increase on the same hardware. And after that, they were able to take those improvements to the source engine and move them over to the Windows and Mac and see the same performance increase there. Well, not quite the same, but a, a big performance increase there too because those real things were getting away from DirectX and more into OpenGL. Um, a lot of people think OpenGL because they haven't been big about announcing you know, their new features. They haven't been big about announcing even new numbers on their features. You know, They haven't really had major release updates, but they've been updating it. And just people that have been in the gaming industry haven't really realized it. And I think Valve was kind of being like, yeah, you know, this is really good. You guys should probably look at this. It supports all your stuff you want. <clears throat> and I think as more people go to OpenGL, I think we're going to also start seeing more from the OpenGL teams to even make it better. Especially as they're getting more and more game industry input. Well, I'm excited. Yeah, it's an exciting year, and next year's even going to be better. <clears throat> so. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we're at about 35 minutes. Oh. Well, with there being so many different Linux distributions, uh, is, uh, is Valve or anybody else that's trying to develop for a Linux gaming environment, are they running into any roadblocks? Uh, yeah. I mean, a little bit. When you release from Linux, you usually release for you can't really release for every little miniature version. You're aiming toward the big ones. You're aiming toward Ubuntu. You're aiming for Fedora. You're aiming toward the ones where everyone's on. And you know, Ubuntu is really the top desktop distro right now. Okay. So they're aiming for those, and that's really where you want to aim first. And then let people submit bug reports for the other ones, and then patch to support it. Maybe look at two or three revisions, and then. After you have the release, just put in the notes. This is made for this, and you know, just be honest about it. Because there are hundreds of different Linux distros now. I mean, there may even be people in this room who made their own Linux distro that they're running. That's not even like something different. So, so is um, this Steam just for Ubuntu right now, or is it for any other? Like, it's for a lot of them now. It's. Um, it was first released just for Ubuntu, but you can install it on just about any of them. And it works pretty solidly on all of them. Nice. So it really is just a matter of a year or two. <clears throat> so what you're saying is with it, if I got an Ubuntu phone, I could have Steam on my mobile and be able to play games on my mobile if I got my Steam. No. Darn it. The problem with that one is, is Steam is built around an Intel architecture, and your phone doesn't run on an Intel architecture. You still have to deal with the hardware side of it. All right, maybe like a 10 or something, or less. There's been a lot of push for ARM architecture, actually, as far as even in gaming goes. Cool. Um, they're actually, um, a lot of people are looking at prediction that the industry is going to move away from Intel pretty quickly. Even, um, even NVIDIA is working on their own integrated CPU, GPU, like not just for mobile, but for desktop. And at that point in time, we may see a shift toward ARM. But when that happens, you know, you're going to pretty much 
none of your old stuff is going to work anymore when it happens. Just kind of like when Mac went to Intel. And from PowerPC. From PowerPC, yeah, uh, you kind of had everything go, everything had to be redone. You had to start over. So, it's going to happen, it's a matter of time. So, and if there aren't any more questions, that's pretty much all I have. <laughs> so thanks everyone for coming. It was a lot of fun having everyone in here. And hopefully next so hopefully next open west they have me at a spot where people are awake. <laughs> Including myself. <laughs>